What's up, everybody? Welcome to the number one podcast coming out of the Carolina, Straight No Chase with Jesse Mitchell. I am the innovator, the emancipator, the originator. Jesse Mitchell, coming to you live from the Icebox 26, and we in the building. Now, tonight, we coming at you a little somber tonight. You got the passing of the one of the, uh, well, I say he's a legend. He's a bit of a legend. He got some hits, you know. Rich Homie Quan, R.I.P. I had a chance to see him perform live a couple times. You know, he, he put on a pretty good show. They say he overdosed on uh, some fake perks that have been laced with fake uh, Percocet pills that were laced with fentanyl. Like, we got to get off these drugs, people. We got to leave these, all, these, all these psychotropic opioids alone. And they just, they lacing it with too much stuff, man. You don't know what they putting in what. I hear they lacing. The, I heard somebody, some a kid overdose from fentanyl being laced on a um a vape. Hear the other uh, recently or whatever. Like you can't hardly do nothing no more. That's why I don't even. They, they don't hanging out in circles and getting right none of that no more. <laughs> nah. I got to have my own. <laughs> nah. None of that. I was like, yeah, it's, it's crazy though. We got to yeah, we got to tighten up, people. It's, this opioid epidemic is, is is just taking everybody. They snatching them every day. Is snatching people left and right, left and right. I done lost, I don't know how many countless people to it. Like, I don't know what we can do. And then, Erica Banks, she come out putting her little uh, two cents out of how she used to it. They had whatever they had or whatever. And like, what, 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 what is this? I mean, I understand you want to grieve too, but you grieve in silence. Like, you've been in silence. You've been on the side and in silence. Stay, stay there. And, then you, and, that's where you, and that's where you grieve at. You let, you let that woman grieve by her man that she been dating. You don't come out now you want to grieve in public. Now all of a sudden you weren't you weren't dating in public. <laughs> now you're grieving in public. Come on now, because I sure nobody knew. Like come on, and another girl that said she. Like, I don't know. Y'all let me know. Y'all think that's too much. Let me know if y'all think that's too much. I don't know, because I mean you know maybe they shouldn't say nothing. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Who knows? I mean, what you think, Vic? Grieve in silence. They should grieve in silence. In your own way. Hmm. Everybody does something different with drugs. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I think so too. Because if you, I mean, what, what, what is what is you coming out publicly now for? What is that about? Then you got the uh, we got this Georgia shooting with the boy. What's the boy? Little boy named Colt. Yeah. Colt Gray. Killed four people, yeah. or four kids, or I don't know what what they call kids that got killed. I know yeah, they had two, two kids, two adults. Two kids, two adults. Then the dad got charged with eight counts of endangering children, and then the dad said he brought him an assault rifle, didn't he? Yeah. Why is you buying your son who's like eight or nine or ten an assault rifle? <laughs> I would. He was saying they gonna hunt a lot. Stop! Stop it! What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> you need you need an assault rifle to go shopping or go, to go hunting? <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, no, no shotgun, no regular rifle. He needed he need an assault rifle. What is he? What is he hunting? <laughs> yeah, so my question. Like, like are you hunting? You, you hunting something really fast that you need an assault rifle to mow him down? I'm just saying. What do you like? Explain to me, like, why you need to buy your middle school son an assault rifle? <laughs> like, I don't understand that. Like. So he, he should have been charged. And then they said the mama had issues. She been doing crazy stuff too, I heard. On a TikTok video, obviously, but you know. Uh it was a news TikTok video. But so I don't know. Is is is, is it is it the case of bad genes? So what 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 is what, what is it? I mean You know they talk about that. You know, I was like, I don't know, I don't know. I believe, you know, hey. I believe you well, it is well, you say that, but then you have situations like people who never really grew up around their parents and they'll be like their parents <laughs> or have same traits as their parents, the same taste as their parents for certain things or whatever. So, I mean, I, I'm sure it is a thing. You're coming out of them, so I'm sure it is a thing <laughs> that some of their stuff is passed on into you. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. This, this whole, it's, it's, it's just. I'm glad they got them. I'm, I'm glad they got them, though, and I'm glad they got them. What I mean, that I mean, I, I would hope they would get it. Where they gonna go? He in the school? What I mean, what? I don't know. The dad, the charge of the dad surprised me now, and now that surprised me. I didn't expect that, but I mean, never know. 
<laughs> Heard about this chase glitch that's been going around. Everybody been jumping on the chase glitch, the chase glitch. Everybody ready to go to jail? Break it into jail, as I call it. What is that? Okay, they've been doing this chase glitch where ain't no glitch, it's check fraud. That's what it is. <laughs> ain't no doggone glitch. <laughs> what they do, they're writing checks and they're depositing them into the account and they're showing up in the account. They're, they're fraudulent checks that are not backed and they're showing up in the account as uh, open funds and they withdraw the funds. Then when it come out that they're checking, it no good. Now that account is negative $10,000, 20000 or whatever. But they got the money. Yeah, but if that's your account, you burned. Oh, for sure. So that person who, who coached you into that, yeah, they straight. But you got to answer for that. And people be getting locked up. There's one girl, a couple girls got locked up. One girl went in there with a bonnet on trying to withdraw like 20, 20 grand. <laughs> who comes in the bank with a bonnet on and cashes a check for 20 grand? <laughs> really? This how you couldn't do your hair. <laughs> you, couldn't, you, you couldn't put your lashes on. <laughs> None of that, huh? You just get up out the bed with the bond on there and say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, cast this, withdraw the 20K. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to think nothing, huh? Like, come on, people. Then, like I said, you're doing check fraud. That ain't no glitch. <laughs> it's check fraud. They've been doing this. It's illegal. <laughs> people been getting people like this for years. That's the thing. Oh, you got an account? Yeah, and go deposit this account and then withdraw it and then... You give me half, and I give you half, and then then they say, you know, your account is is withdraw the whole, ain't no half. <laughs> so now you yeah, the whole, you got to cash in the whole. That's what they looking for. They ain't looking for no half. While the other person who didn't got the half, then as my mama was sitting white, they behind and went on about their business. Right. Yeah. Hey. Mm mm. <clears throat> uh, could you date someone? That doesn't share the same religion and beliefs as you, Vic? Uh, yeah. You could? I don't know. Y'all let me know because y'all do that. Because y'all date someone that, has this, that, that doesn't share the same religious beliefs and beliefs as you? I don't know. It would be kind of hard, though. Yeah, I, I would think. That would be, that would be kind of difficult. Yeah. Like, you just talk about, you know what I mean? You just don't believe in God, and I'm saturating the blood of the Lamb. And <laughs> <laughs> That just don't that just don't sit well with me. I'm just I just wouldn't be I'd be a little edgy, a little uneasy with that. I don't know. I'd just be like, okay, let's get married. <laughs> let's go hang. <laughs> let's go, let's go to the movies. <laughs> like I don't know about that, you know, but I mean people, everybody's different. Like, you know. Like I, I mean like like it's, <laughs> Do you believe in anything at all? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like if you don't believe in nothing, like Man, can we really have serious conversations? Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Nothing spiritual. I don't think I could do it personally. I mean, everybody's different. Y'all let me know what y'all think, but I, I don't think, I don't know. I think that would be a deal breaker for me if you just like, yeah, I worship the devil. I'm, I'm just saying. I say, <laughs> I don't think I'd be like, wait, I'm scheduling our next date. I'm just saying. I just, just you know, you know. Now. They might be a different, you know, maybe Catholic, maybe Baptist, something like that, you know, but y'all still believe in a God, you know what I mean? So, that would be, you know. Okay. How many kids is too many kids when you're dating somebody? For me, one is too many for me. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I ain't got none. <laughs> one is too many for me. And I ain't looking to take care of none or run behind none, none of that, so... I'm just going to tell you, but you know, everybody's preference is different. <laughs> everybody has a number. <laughs> so, you know, y'all let me know what y'all number is. How many kids is too many? Men and women. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. How many kids is too many when you're dating somebody? You know. I guess. <laughs> one, one ain't too much. I mean, it's too many, Vic. Is five too many? I don't know. <laughs> now you don't know. Oh, now you playing the fence. Now you playing the fifth now. See what I'm saying? Now you straddling on me. Don't straddle on me. Don't straddle on me, nah. Lord have mercy. This Dame Dash and 50 Cent beef then just went. I just went. Uh, just uh, out the mouth, I guess. How we oh, <laughs> we going to say. I don't know. <laughs> How you on live talking smack and talking junk to somebody and your teeth jump out your mouth? Explain it to me, Vic. You know somebody lying when their teeth don't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> His teeth said, we had enough. We out. We out. Literally. 
<laughs> like, come on, Dad. Dame. He came back like it ain't nothing happened. Yeah. But how you going to be on the side trying to fix it like we don't see you? We can see you, Dame. You can tell your girl to get in front all you want to. We can still see you, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, we got eyes. We can see you in the corner over there trying to piece it together. We can see you, bro. <laughs> you might as well just stand on the line and fix it. I don't even know why you went to the side. <laughs> Lord have mercy, bro. Jeez, boy. Old people on the internet. <laughs> Try to fix it, bro. Bro, like, yo, just, just, cut, just cut the live, man. It's over. The live is done, man. Shut it down. Just shut it down, bro. It's over. The thrill is gone. That ship has sailed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't really came back, though. <laughs> like, we ain't just see that. Yo, yeah. No, y'all didn't see that. Nah, y'all ain't see that. We're going to act like y'all didn't see that. Right. Mm-hmm. You fly a lot, Vic? On planes? Yes, sir. Obviously, what else you going to fly on? Yes, <laughs> Unless you're on helicopters like we used to be in the military. Right. You fly first class a lot? Yes, sir. You know, one of the tricks to getting first, cl- first class for the LO, as I like to call it, the low, is not to book it straight first class. Book your regular flight, and then you use an upgrade, and then you upgrade the first class. Yes. That can, say, that can be different to so you paying uh, 2000 and two or 300 so that's just a little trick for you, a little tip for you to know. Don't, don't ever just book straight first class. Book your flight and then you, you upgrade to first class. That's right. And that's how you save a couple of isms in your pocket for your trip. Yes, now you're buying nice little souvenirs and towels and stuff like that, and keychains and stuff that you ain't going to have three years later. Right. But they're nice to buy at the time. <laughs> right. You got to buy something now. You got to buy something to show me I've been here now. I can't just come and not have nothing. Come on now. <clears throat> you got to buy something. But yeah, that's a way to get that. First class and shipping, sipping champagne. Oh, yeah. well, champagne. Well, Come on now. Come on. That's when you, uh, it was it tier one? Or what they call it? Tier one or whatever they call it. Mm. <clears throat> Man. Seven step plan to financial freedom. Buckle up. You know, I'm going to load, I'm going to get it to you. You know, I'm going to give it to you. You ready? All right now. Step one save $1,000. No way, hey, hey, you, you do it. If you got to do a little side hustle and hey, you do something, hey, you can say save, save up $1,000. Step two, pay off all your debt except your mortgage. List them from smallest debt to largest debt, making minimum payments on the uh, majority. <clears throat> then spend on the, on the lowest. You pay the lowest off all the way up till you get to the top. Step three, save up to three to six months of expenses. Step four, invest. 15% of your income. Come on now. Step five, investing for your kid's college. Whatever you can afford to put away, start putting away and investing for your kid's college. Step six, moving to pay off your home and get your home paid off. Step seven, you're financially free. You can give and live how you want to live. Money's flowing and credit will get it. <laughs> Come on now. Seven steps, get you to financial freedom. From the rooter to the tutor. And you know that's how I'm going to get to you because I was a country boy. I try to give you what I can do now. You know I try to give you what I can do now. Also, a strategy a lot of billionaires use to scale up their businesses. Business people, I feel you have to listen to me. I'm going to get to you right now. It's called the 5151. 5151, 5151 strategy. <clears throat> Step one, you do everything. Okay. Step two, you hire a generalist to do everything or to do do the work. Step three, you replace the generalist with specialists. Step four, you allow specialists to run it. See, the difference is generalists have their hands in a lot of different things. They do a lot of different things, a lot of different pots, a lot of different things going on. A specialist is going to specialize, and he's an expert in what you do and what you're doing. And a lot of times, generalists can cost more on average. So... That specialist is going to take your business to where you need to go to the next level. And that's how you scale your business up and start making them, what's called it, six, seven, eight figures. Nine, ten on up, you know, money that we can't even think about. I can't even think about that. I ain't know that. I, ain't know, I can't even count that high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't even count that high. I had to get another cat just to count it for me. I won. Give me my money. <laughs> Well, since we own, since we talking money, let's keep talking money. We here. Three businesses you should look to 
by our investing in the future. First one is addiction recovery centers. It's an epidemic on addictions right now. Every dollar that you invest in that also gives a dollar and 40 back to the community. And uh, the addiction treatment market has grown to 35 billion a year, up 10 billion in the last 10 years. And most health insurance plans cover it. So that means you get your money straight from them. Straight on in, you ain't gotta worry about them paying the bill. Number two, senior living facilities. Over the next 20 years, there's gonna be 80 million adults over 70 years old. <clears throat> the gross income could be three to five X normal rent. Come on now. That's money back in your pocket. Number three, sports and injury recovery systems. Nutrition, counseling, massage therapy. You can have diverse, re diversified revenue, recurring monthly. And uh, once again, a lot of insurance companies cover that, depending on the age. So those three businesses looking at, you should look to get into into the future that it might have you set for the future. I'm just saying, you know, I, I get information. You can take it. You can use it. If you don't, I, you know, I give it to you. That's all I can do. That's all I can do. But we're going to keep giving it to you, you know. How you feel about parking? You've been to the city and uh, you're from D.C. Yeah. Parking is crazy in D.C. too, right? Absolutely. I See, I'm from the country, so, you know, I ain't used to that. You know, in New York, when you go to New York, I ain't know parking was this serious. You know, I just didn't know it was that serious. We go to, I go to, we go to visit my uncle, RIP, he didn't pass now. I drove up, we drove up, you know, we get up there. So he's telling me don't park on, I can't park on the street because they're going to come through and sweep the street or clean the street or something. You can't be parked on the street. Right, right. Okay. I don't understand it. It's the streets here. Why can't I park on the street? But okay, cool. He's like, yeah, I pull around the back and you can park in the back. You know, it's spec. I got space in the back. Okay, cool. So I pull around the back and just pull in the space and, you know, hop out. Well, before I hop out, I see a dude come out and he's, like, frantically saying stuff. And I don't know what he's saying, so now I hop out the car and he's basically tearing me a new one <laughs> about this parking space. And I don't know I don't know what's going on. I'm looking at him like, what's happening? What is he talking about? Should I pull the strap? I don't know what I'm, <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. And then my uncle come running out, and then they get into it, and they bought the dog on box out there. And I'm like, damn, all oh, this over a parking space? Yeah. Bro, I can move the car. <laughs> like, hey, that's it. Yeah, you're gonna move it. All right. <laughs> cool. So I moved the whip, you know. And then he's he squeezed his car up in there. You know, I'm talking about ain't it tight too now. I'm talking about tight back up in there now. Then, then I and my uncle, I had to go down the road around the block to find a space to park the car. I come back down. That's my uncle telling me they pay for their spaces and they, it was all the, I'm like, they don't give y'all spaces with the place? <laughs> when y'all pay for the place? He's like, nah, you gotta pay for that extra. What? Yeah. What kind of junk is that? You gotta pay for an extra parking space or pay for a parking garage to put your car in. I see people in New York ain't got no car. I wouldn't have one either. Right. <laughs> exactly I gotta pay the payment, the insurance, and pay the parking? Yeah. Dog, I ain't even got no gas yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, down here you just park. You can park at the Walmart anywhere. Gas station, just pull over. That don't matter. <laughs> now you might get told eventually after a while now, but <laughs> <laughs> leave it long, Yeah, you can get it for a little while. You can eat for a little while now. They ain't gonna kill you now for a little while. Mm -mm. You see this uh Father gave his son a million dollar lotto ticket as a wedding gift. No. Yeah, he gave his son a million dollar. He said it was a, a, the quickest way to get him out of his basement. I'm sure he was joking. But <laughs> yeah, he gave his son a million dollar lotto ticket as a wedding gift. And his son had the choice. He could pick a thousand a week for life or the one time cash payout of a million dollars, <clears throat> which will be taxed. Right. See, y'all let me know what y'all would pick, people. A thousand dollars a week for life. Or uh, the $1 million payout, which is probably going to be about 600 once they tax it and all that. Right. I, le I learned that the hard way when they, I got my bonus from the military, which was 10000 And I'm thinking I'm getting 10000 I got like 6200 6, And I'm looking like, uh, where's the rest of my isms? Because it ain't isming. <laughs> What's happening here? And he's like, oh, uh, you got taxes. Well, how are you tax the bonus? Explain that to me. <laughs> This ain't my salary now. <laughs> this ain't my salary now. 
You taxing my bonus? Like, what are you talking about? What? Uh, what? You your government? You will be taxed. Thank you. Won't. You will be taxed. And I'm talking about heavy tax too. You oh, and that puts you in a different tax bracket. So yeah, we chopping that blah. Yeah, cut me. Wow. Scissors. <sighs> sick. You talking about sick? What? I'm looking for some more bands. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go get go crazy. I'm ready to go shopping and, and do some other things. Right. Buy some strange little piece of change, you know. Hey, I'm, I'm ready. To, <laughs> I'm ready to get right. My check my shipping came in, baby. <clears throat> nah, uh Didn't come in. But yeah. So, I mean, y'all let me know what y'all would pick. I think I would go ahead and just cash out though, because I mean a thousand a week sounds good for life, but hey, you can die tomorrow. Apparently, you see your people dying and dropping dead, so. Yeah. That's when they send somebody at you and you don't even know. Playing chess on you. See what I'm saying? Yeah, go ahead and cash me out. Get my 600. Let me go ahead and open up me a little something and I'm chilling. Right. And I'm chilling. All day long I'm chilling. No, it's time I asked you about the, uh, the dating earlier. You know, <clears throat> when you're in a relationship or a marriage... A lot of times, people don't communicate and a lot of things start falling apart. And I believe, you know, just me, that everyone always focuses on what the other person is or isn't doing instead of looking at what you can do to improve yourself or what you're doing to see if that changes the problem. Everyone evolves and changes. The key is to communicate and make sure y'all stay on the same page and evolve together and not in different directions. And see, a lot of times we don't communicate. We just assume that we're doing what this person wants, what the person wants or what they need based off of what we think. <laughs> Instead of just asking the person, is this what you want or is this what you need? Or what do you need? <laughs> so I think in relationships that would help and would, uh, in dating, that would help a lot nowadays. I know a lot of people are having issues with that. You know, that's just my opinion, you know. Yeah, and if they give his two cents, you might not, you know, want to agree as always. But hey, that's just what I think, you know. Sometimes you got to look at yourself and fix yourself and then, you know, because like I said, you can't be a whole part of anything, anything if you're not whole yourself. So you got to be whole first before you can be a part of anything and make it whole. So, Come on. you know, I'm just trying, you know, I just try to tell you, you know, I just try to give you what I can give you, you know. I talk from experience, you know, what I learned, you know. I'm learning every day. You know I mean? I'm working progress like everybody else, you know. This is my first time living too. Did you know there are names that are illegal in America that you can't name your child? Uh, no. I ain't know that. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ, Messiah. <laughs> you can't name your child the at symbol. Can't name your child king, queen, the number three, Santa Claus, majesty, number 1069. <laughs> and, it's a, it's a, and it's a bunch of other crazy names and stuff too. Though. You can't name it. You're supposed to, it's illegal. And if the government catches you, you can get in trouble. No? The Messiah. No? Wow. Or a Messiah. You can't name a Messiah? That's what it said. That's what they said. Wow. If the government catch you, you could be, you could be in trouble. If boss catch you, you could be in trouble. <laughs> Don't let Mr. Charlie catch you now. <laughs> <laughs> you could be in trouble. Hey, if boss catch you, you could be in trouble. How you going to tell somebody what they can name their child? <laughs> what? Right. Nah, you can't name them. That's illegal. What? Only in America, Jack. I swear. Crazy. Crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> Never heard that. Yeah, me either. To the day. And I, I seen that early and I was like, what? That's insane. Insane. You gonna tell me I can't name my child this because it's illegal. What? Man, I remember on, uh Nowadays, these cats, man, they don't play no ball. I, mean, I was watching, uh, be watching little clips online. These cats be playing ball. Sunday used to be the day. Sunday was the day. You go to the park. You go to the outdoor court on Sunday. Everybody's out there. That's when you put on your show. That's when you put up a S-H-U-T up. Uh, yeah, and nowadays, you know, everybody, they got the bums out there, and they just, they just recording, and, it ain't, and it's, it, ain't, it ain't like it used to be. I remember... We used to be out there. You go out there on that Sunday. We used to go to Westover Court. We used to go to uh, 
I had a spy V. And, he just, and, and the run was was serious. It was a serious run. You know what I'm saying? It's not a day. They just, it ain't the same. Man. I mean, one day we was out there cooking, too. Me, my, we had our little squad. We had to kill it. We got to, and we had, like, the best. We picked up, like, two other guys out there. So we got, like, the best five out there. Everybody else is pretty much ain't like that. So we scraping everybody. Next thing you know, you see this cat so come walking up. He's walking up with his ball. Now, when he get close, I see it's Tremaine Ball. Shout out Tremaine. Now, I know Tremaine can go. You know what I mean? They don't know Tremaine. Everybody else out here. I know Tremaine is the truth. Fucking go. So, I tell Buddy. So, he come out there now. So, Tremaine, they pick Tremaine up. So, he get five. So, he get on the court now. So, I tell Desmond. Shout out to Desmond. <laughs> I say, yo. All right, now. You want me to get him? He can go. He said, no, nah, I got him. I said, all right, cool. So, now I'm going to tell you when you know it's bad. Because <laughs> we got an old school cat on our team now. So, he old school. You know, country old school cat. So, like I said, we've been cooking. We've been kicking cats butts all day long. We've been cooking all day. We, we probably won about four games, maybe five games. Right? So, <clears throat> we playing. We come down. I come down, do something. I score, whatever. Now, Jermaine come down with the ball. Boom. He come down. Boom, 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 boom. He do like a little couple of combinations. So they had this little move where they used to do like a little AO move where they used to go like that and snatch it back. But the way he did it, it was so crazy. It was like his hand was like right up, like two inches from the ground. Then he snatched it back so quick. Desmond's all the way over there, about out of bounds. <laughs> he pulls up, shoots the joint off the glass. We outside, mind you. Like I said, we outside now. All right. Came down again to the next side, on the, on, the left, on the other side. Hit him with the same move with the other hand, other way. Desmond's out of the picture again. <laughs> he shot the Des. He pulls up, shoot off the glass on the other side. Now old school goes home and says, uh, hey, y'all, uh, we got one that can play now. <laughs> yeah, no, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, we do got one that can play, apparently. Tell Desmond that, because Desmond got to get back on the court. <laughs> Yo, I'll never forget that. We ended up beating him, though, but boy, couldn't do nothing with him. <laughs> nothing. He did what he wanted to. Couldn't do nothing with him. <laughs> wow. Dance, you remember that shit? Let me know. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. Well, yeah, that's when Sunday used to be the joint out there, man. The outdoor court. <clears throat> Y'all got to get back to that, man. Y'all got to come on, man. Yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for us this evening. Thank you for joining us in Masterpiece Theater. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I am the innovator, the emancipator, the originator. Jesse Mitchell, this is Mr. Straight No Chase, number one podcast coming out of the Carolinas. Coming to a city, mailbox, TV, phone, iPod, if they still got them, <laughs> near you. Stay tuned. No, it's the tablet. Now, nah, ain't it? My bad, the tablet. I love you. I love you.